Hi, I'm attorney Gregory Dell, joined today by attorney Rachel Alters. And today's disability benefit tip is about long-term disability denials by MetLife Disability Insurance Company. And specifically, we want to discuss initial steps that should be taken if your disability claim has been denied. And Rachel, MetLife is really um, probably one of the top five largest group disability insurance companies. They do write some individual policies under the name of Bright House, which is another marketing type name that they use. But primarily, they make most of their revenue off of these group employer provided policies. And when a claimant contacts you, of which you've spoken to thousands of MetLife disability claimants, what's the first most important piece of information that you need in order to start the process of getting their benefits reinstated for them? The most important thing I need from them up front is the denial letter because I need to know why MetLife denied the claim. And what is significant about the denial letter and what do you expect to see in that letter? Usually most MetLife denial letters will spell out the reasons why MetLife denied the claim. So why they believe you're not disabled, what their hired physicians put in their reports stating why they disagree with your doctors who claim you are disabled versus what their doctor's opinions are as to why they think you can work full time. So that should be in, in the body of the letter. Um, they also spell out all the records that they've reviewed, um, all the documents they relied upon usually, and then it'll also have a section as to what they think needs to be done to get the claim overturned. So they'll often say, you know, if you would like to have this claim reviewed, we suggest that you have more tests like x-rays or MRIs performed and submit those to us, go see you know, other physicians, submit additional medical records, et cetera. So that will all be in the, medical, in the um, denial letter. And then it'll also give them 180 days from the date of the denial to do an appeal and submit it. And then also in these denial letters, they talk about the right to request a claim file. Right. Is that something that a claimant should be doing? Absolutely. It's probably one of the most important things that we are going to need as lawyers to refute the claim denial because what the claim file contains is pretty much everything that MetLife has collected since the inception of the application of the claim, what they relied upon. Um, so it gives us an idea of what we need to do to fight the claim and get it overturned. And then how important is it to understand the language in the policy and at what point can you get a copy of the policy? Well, some people already have a copy of their policy. Their, their employers often provide that. Um, otherwise, the policy is contained in the claim file. So when we, as your lawyers, request a claim file or when the claimant requests it, the policy should be contained inside the claim file. And it's very important to understand the definitions and your rights under the policy terms. And most people don't even read their policies. And when they do, they don't understand what the policy means. MetLife has a, sometimes they'll tell a claimant, well, you've been denied, they may tell them verbally, you're mm -hmm. going to get a letter. And then they say, well, you can just appeal. And right. the claim person may seem nice on the phone, and many times, unfortunately, people call us and go, oh, I did my appeal. They mm -hmm. haven't seen the denial letter, they haven't reviewed the claim file. Right. Why do you um, advise people that they should never just go ahead and file an appeal without having reviewed the claim file? it's probably the worst thing they can do because they have no idea other than the denial letter what MetLife has relied upon in reviewing the claim and then going ahead to deny the claim. So it's very important to know the contents of the claim file and then be able to um, refute those. And if you don't have that available to you, then your arguments, you know, it's going to be missing all of those items and you only get one shot and an appeal with MetLife. So what happens is if you do the appeal on your own, submit it without the help of a lawyer, and then you go to a lawyer and say, oh no, I forgot to add X, Y, and Z to this appeal. I didn't think of this. You don't get another shot. You basically have to go right to trial, and all a judge is going to see is what's in that administrative record. So it's very important to review the claim file and have somebody who knows what they're doing, such as a lawyer, to prepare that appeal for you. What, what I always tell people, and we say it, and we've done hundreds of videos, and um, is that people should contact us immediately upon receiving a denial that we'll immediately provide them with a free initial consultation, which means send us a copy of your denial letter, whether it's Rachel, myself, any of our lawyers, we'll immediately set a free phone consultation with you. We'll review the denial letter. We'll let you know if we think you have a good chance of winning. We'll let you know what we think MetLife did wrong. We'll let you know a time frame that we think it's going to take to get benefits reinstated. We'll let you know about the expenses and the cost to work with an attorney um, and really give you some strategies and a good 
platform to start this process because whether you hire us or you do it on your own, we want you to be in the best position possible to get your MetLife benefits reinstated and without really understanding the fundamentals and what lays ahead, not only in what has to be in the appeal, but if you lose the appeal, what's gonna happen in a lawsuit? And so much of planning for the lawsuit takes place right now in the appeal and it's hard to articulate that in a you know five minute video that we're doing, although we have lots of videos about what to expect with a MetLife disability lawsuit or what to expect in a lawsuit or how to write these appeals. And we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and look at those videos. But most importantly, contact any of us, no matter where you live in the country, we'll provide you with this consultation and hopefully be able to put you in the best position possible to help you get your MetLife benefits reinstated.